Before we can continue on with our discussion of acids and bases, we need to take a second and talk about the self-ionization of water. So if you remember in our bronsted lowery definition of acids and bases, water was a requirement for those reactions. So this means that water is going to be present in the acid and base reactions that we're going to be talking about. So we need to take a second and say, how does water affect these acid and base reactions? One of the first things that we can realize about water is that it is amphiprotic, which means it can act as an acid or a base. So in this case, water can grab on to an H plus to form um, hydronium, or it can give up an H plus to form hydroxide. So it can either act as an acid or a base. This amphiprotic nature of water causes it to go, undergo a self-ionization. So in this case, what we're talking about is pure water by itself. So what happens with water when we don't have any acid or base present? Water undergoes a self-ionization by itself. So here we have two waters. One is going to act as an acid. One's going to act as a base. So here, this water gives up NH plus to this water. Um, this water forms a hydroxide, this water forms a hydronium. So you can see water in this reaction is acting as an acid and a base. And in fact, hydronium and hydroxide are both being produced. This actually represents a very important reaction. And when we look at the equilibrium expression for this, so remember it's products divided by reactants, but both of our reactants are liquid water, so they're not involved in our equilibrium expression. The equilibrium expression is just the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide is equal to some constant 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. This reaction is called Kw, or the ion product of water, and it's going to be very important in our acid and base uh, discussions. And we will see as we go along, Kw will show up multiple times in our discussions. But one of the first things that we can see from the self-ionization of water is that the concentration of hydronium and the concentration of hydroxide are directly linked to each other by Kw. And this is going to be an important fact when we start talking about the relevant, relative concentrations of both of them. But in pure water, if we look at this expression, it means that the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of hydroxide, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus seventh. And this is actually our definition of neutrality. So our definition of neutrality is that the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. And later on, we're going to find out that this number, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7th, is actually related to the idea of neutral water being a pH of 7. So when we talk about pHs, we will see that. And one of the things I think is interesting is that in neutral water, there is still some concentration of hydronium and some concentration of hydroxide. So the, these concentrations are never zero. So in, in no case can there be a zero concentration of hydronium or hydroxide if there's water present. And that's going to be something else that will show up later. So just in summary, this is our definition of neutrality, is when the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of hydroxide. And also because we have this Kw equilibrium expression, that means our concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide are always going to be tied to each other. So because water is present, later on when we start adding acid and base or base to a solution of water, we will be able to uh, look at the relative concentrations of both species.